Hello and welcome to another edition of the High B Buzz, your one-stop shop for all things Hibernian Football Club. And what a week we have for you this week in the show. We have Rudy, we have Judy, and we have Yogi. So it's one hell of a week. And of course, we have Adam and Ben as well. So uh, a great group of people uh, to come and to hear from today. Um, not least, great to have you here, John Hughes, uh, uh, as our first visit to the High B Buzz this year. Very good to have you on board, John. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, we've got plenty to discuss. We'll tell you a little bit more about the Judy and Rudy as, as time goes on. That's Judy Murray and Rude Hullet joining us on this show. But let's come to you first, John, and, and, and let's look back to the, the weekend, I suppose. And would you say that was a disappointing draw against Dundee, having, having gone behind but then taken the lead and, and not being able to hold on to it? Yeah, I, uh, I watched the game and it took him 20 minutes to really get going. Um, obviously, losing the early goal. But they showed plenty of character um, to get back into the lead. And if I'm being honest, they should have seen the game out. They should have managed the game and seen the game out. One thing I'm noticing about Hibs at this moment in time, a lot of the goals that they're losing are crossing from, from the left-hand side. Um, everything's coming down the left-hand side. So Jack will be aware of that. And I'm quite sure they'll be working hard on the training pits to try and rectify it. Is that the difference that when you get ahead, if you're going to progress, John, you've got, you've got to hold on to that and, and see out games? Yeah, 100%. You need, you need to know how to manage a game, you know, who to give the ball to, take it a run uh, and stop the crosses coming into your box. The thing about it, I did see Jack will be working on it at the training pitch. I'm 100% convinced of that. But at times as a manager, you don't want to dwell on it too much. Because the more emphasis you put on it, it seems to always come back and bite you on the backside. So the boys are experienced enough, you know, just to know, just that sort of, you know, a little bit of video analysis, a wee bit of work on your training pitch and say, like, let's try and go and rectify it. But, you know, that's just, that was just a slight disappointment. That would have been a right good win for Hibs there at the weekend, especially with the turmoil, uh, the players that we were missing going into the game. So... A little bit disappointing, but you just take it and move on. And do you see, do you see our defence as a, a slight problem conceding too many at the moment? Well, it was big Hanlon, big Paul Hanlon's been missing since he took that head knock, and him and Ryan Porches has been a fantastic partnership. So, you know, big Darren's come in there and done exceptionally well. And if you look at it, you know, it's just when it, as I just touched on, it's some of the goals you lose. If you go back to the Murrayville. Yeah, game and even that one there the man the culprit you could point the finger at is Gogic you know the midfielder just running off the back of him and getting in there uh, and when I'm saying pointing the finger that's exactly what I mean these things happen in football it's just so happens that when one thing like that happens to you you're saying right okay and it just seems to creep up and happen again that's no uh, as I say no blame on Gogic, it's just these things, these wee quirky things that happen in football. He's been a fantastic uh, player for the club, and I'm quite sure you know you'll just learn from your mistakes. And the next time, you'll just maybe get a little bit touch tight and you know do a better job. Even that doy on the back post, you know he needs to he needs to be coming across, you know, and leave the furthest one away and make sure he's going to head it. So that sort of stuff. I'm talking about that Jack will be working on, uh, you know, behind and crosses up onto the back post for Doig to go and head and all that kind of stuff. With foot going over the top, because as I say, if you touch on it too much, it becomes a problem. You're talking about touching. Now, now this I'd love, love to get everyone's view on this. We got a penalty. It went to us, but... And, and just watching the coverage of the weekend, everyone said, yeah, that's a penalty. That's a penalty. Well, Stone Waller! Stone Waller! <laughs> <laughs> Honest, you, you can't even breathe on anyone these days in the box. That, I mean, come on, John, when you were playing, if, you, if, you, if someone that you'd been marking had gone down like that, you'd have been talking to him while he was on the ground, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would have been picking him up with a scruff in the neck. But there yeah, again, it's part and parcel of the game. And Murphy was very, very clever. His movement initially on the diagonal from Porteous was fantastic. 
just to get in there. And as soon as he got that yard in front, he knew exactly what he was doing. It was touch and go if it was in the box, I have to say. Yeah. But, um, other teams do it. It's part and parcel what's creeping into the game. Going back in my day, someone that gave you, left a bit on you, um, you got on with the game, you, you felt you didn't want to show any kind of weakness. Total change in the game. Uh, anyone, you know, and if you can gain advantage in, it's part and parcel. Listen, I had a go at Boyle for diving when I was manager of Ross County for uh, Boyle di- diving. Um, and yet, I have to be honest to say that, I actually say to my team, if you've got a chance in that box one-on-one and somebody's daft enough to stick a leg out, take the opportunity and go down. Let the referee let the referee make the decision. Yeah, you, you take them all day long, wouldn't you? But um, hey, I, I, I couldn't believe the way everyone was just agreeing, going, yeah, that's a penalty these days. I'm thinking, really? <laughs> <laughs> ben? But what what was the uh, the feeling in the in the dressing room, or, or did everyone just gloss over it and more disappointed by actually, you know, um, not holding on for for the win? I think first of all, just to pick up on something that Yogi said, as a high B, of course, it's a Stonewall penalty. But as he alluded to in previous, when he's been judging that kind of incident, and he mentioned Martin Boyle, he didn't only say that it was a dive. I think Yogi, your exact words were Martin Boyle brought a pair of speedos onto the football field. (laughs) (laughs) So it just shows you that you can have a bit of perspective, can't you? And if we take off our kind of tinted white and green sunglasses, then maybe there was a little bit more of a dubious nature about the build up to the spot kick. But let's be honest that you can kind of debate these things and throughout the course of the season they'll even themselves out won't they and sometimes the decisions will go our way maybe there was an element of fortune in the build-up but let's not distract from the fact that Martin Boyle taking penalties where there's high pressure and an open play is an absolutely phenomenal form he's got six goals it's earned him a call up again to the Australia national team which means that he's right in the mix for Qatar 2022 He's obviously recently signed a new deal at the football club as well. And having that kind of player, that character, someone with the kind of ice cool nerves that can convert from the spot and do so much in open play, it's brilliant at the moment because we know that we're going to miss Christian Doidge. We know that Carl McGuinness might not continue with the kind of numbers that he's putting up at the moment throughout the course of the full season. So when you get a goal, regardless of the circumstances, regardless if it was or wasn't a penalty, we are taking it. And even though it probably was too dropped points to get a point and have two previous wins before it shows you those kind of high expectations because we're disappointed as a Burnian football club not to have won three consecutive games. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Yeah, go on, John. Yeah, I was just saying, just touching on what Ben said, obviously talking about Martin Boyle. The last player, Hibs have been very, very active in, in the transfer market, obviously with James Scott being the last one in. Very good player, very astute signing from Jack, but at times you have to realise tying up the players that are at the club, like Martin Boyle and Nisbet, for me, that's more important than bringing new players to the club, because if these guys can keep showing the forum that they've showed over a few years, then they're entitled to that new contract, and they start to get into, it starts to get into their blood what it is to be a Hibs player, and I think that's a great piece of business that Hibs got Martin Boyle tied up. Fantastic. Better than any bringing any new player to the club. Tying Martin Boyle to the club for another good few years was the best bit of business this season. Absolutely. And 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 the same about Nisbet as well. That that would be, you know, um, we would love this transfer window to close uh, as soon as possible uh, and have all the, the squad players uh, amongst... Um, us at Easter Road rather than disappearing off to rivals or somewhere else. Well, well, Angus, see, see on that, 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 that's where you have to take your hat off to the owner because the owner is, is you know, he realises that we've got good players at Hibs and it's never always been the case, but it's something that the Hibs supporters have deserved over the years, keeping them with good players and just paying that little bit extra money to keep them there. Uh, and it's great. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm, I'm a local guy and I speak to most have supporters, and they are actually delighted at the business that's going on at Easter Road at this moment in time. It's interesting what, what Ron Gordon, the owner, has, has had to say recently. You know, he's been quoted um, uh, as saying, obviously, that he, he, he 
the, the third position last year is, is where some, somewhere that the club should be aiming for each year, but also that actually there are too many football clubs. It's this contentious debate. There are too many football clubs, professional football clubs um, in Scottish football. Uh, John, is this, a, is this just something that, that people raise every now and again and, and it disappears, or, or is it something that we all ought to be looking at? It's something that we've been looking at for a number and number of years. Um, and Ron's probably looked at it from that commercial business side, brain that he's got, what's best for Scottish football. He's not coming in and saying what's best for Hibernian Football Club. He's, look, he's probably looking at Scottish football as a whole, and he's 100% correct. Where is too many football clubs uh, in Scotland, you know, where you could get one or two clubs amalgamating together and be a bigger uh, bigger club. Um, but try and tell them that, try, try, try to amalgamate the Hibs and Harps or the two Dundee <laughs> clubs. And it's down, I guess it's down to tradition. These yeah. clubs, you know, um, you know, the local, they're in the community, the club, they play a big part in the community. And I'm not talking about Premier League clubs, I'm talking about part-time clubs. They play a magic, massive part of the community, any place, any city. In Scotland, so and plus, as I say, you know, when when that goes to the vote, everyone's everybody wants a bigger cut of the pie, and so keep it a league, a league twelve will probably will probably remain. Okay, well, uh, as we head towards Livingston at the weekend, let's hear from the boss. Here's Jack. I think first of all, obviously, very early in the season for all teams, um, and it takes a little while, maybe another five six games in the season before it starts to settle down at all. And, and also they've had some narrow defeats in that and with a difficult opening fixture at Ibrox, I think probably the toughest game you could get at that stage in terms of going to the Champions and opening day. Um, and obviously two really narrow home defeats. So I think that um, I've heard Davey speak about believing that performances have been good and just not results. So I'm sure they'll come with a good result against us last year at Easter Road. Believing that they can do the same. For us, it's about maintaining large elements of performance level to date. We've been, we've been pretty good this season. Um, been really, really good and I've put in an attacking sense and created a lot. Um, and if we can do that again Saturday, give ourselves a really good chance of winning the game. So Kevin will be back. Um, Joe Newell, 50-50 at the moment. Um, still an outside chance, but we'll see how he is tomorrow. Um, Chris Cadden's returned to full training, but obviously he's been out for quite a while, so a little bit early for him. Um, as is Stephen Bradley, he's returned to full training, but again, early for him as well. So other than that, uh, yeah, Kevin being back, um, Paul Hanlon still doubtful as well. Um, so pretty similar as we were last weekend with the exception of Kevin being back available. I would be really, really surprised and disappointed if we didn't um, add to the squad. We, we have worked pretty hard to do it yet, but we've also been... I, I want to make sure as ones that I believe will improve us. So we've, we've turned out the opportunity to sign some. We thought it was maybe just doing it for the sake of doing it. But we need to still add a couple. Um, and if we do that, then it will also um, it'll enable us to move some out of the way as well um, that need to go and play. But we've not been able to do that as of yet, just because we were at numbers-wise, we'd be losing some players. So I would hope that the former will definitely happen, which will strengthen and improve us in the squad. And then it'll also have a knock-on effect, enabling us to, to free up some space in the squad and get players game time that need it as well. It's uh, it's one of those games, isn't it, uh, Livingston John? That you know, bottom of the table, they haven't got a point. You're playing at home, and everyone uh, expects you to win it comfortably. Yeah, you've got it, Angus. It's expectations. How do we deal with expectations? Now that the fans are back, which we've we've sorely missed. You know, they want to see a bit of the action and the success that we had last year. Now, me being being there as a coach and a manager, that can be dangerous. Let's just keep cool. You know, there'll be ups and downs. And it's where we get at the end of the season. And Livingston, having not won this year, they'll be they'll be wanting to get that you know first first win under their belt. And they're always a dogged, hard working team, ugly to play against. And I've just got a sneaky feeling that although they probably not reached the heights that they did last year, I've got I've got a sneaky feeling that that's what they'll bring to the table on Saturday. And Hibs will have to be at their best to go and get the victory. Yeah, Adam, what's the feeling of of fans now that you know more and more getting inside Easter Road and um, season ticket numbers are going up as well? Yeah, I think it's uh, there's a magnificent feeling among supporters because they can actually 
be back together once again. This will be the first time in what 18 months where supporters have been able to actually sit back in their in their season ticket spot, for example. It's incredible. Season ticket numbers keep rising as well. Over 11,000 um, supporters now have, have purchased a season ticket for, for the upcoming campaign. And we, we always talk about football as, as being going there to watch a game, but it's far bigger than that. If you think people will be back in their seats for the first time, like I say, in 18 months, that means the people perhaps in front of them or next to them that they've made friends with, they might not have even seen for 18 months. And it's, it's again, that family community aspect again. Uh, John touched upon it uh, there when we were talking about um, the Scottish football and the size of um, the number of teams in the country where actually it's, it's like that again, but closer to, closer to us at, at Hibernian when it, it is just about a family, a culture among the football club. Um, and that will be the, that will be the biggest thing I think um, on Saturday. Yes. Everyone wants us to go into the uh, international break top of the cinch premiership. Everyone wants us to get 12, uh, 10 points out of the 12 possible that, that we could get, but equally football to one side, this will be a, a massive celebration. I can imagine when, when those players walk out the tunnel at Easter Road. Well, you talk about that family atmosphere. There is no bigger Hibs supporting family than the Murrays, I would suggest. We know of uh, Andy's allegiance. Well, also mum, Judy, uh, she is a huge Hibs fan and she has got the role of coaching the rest of the world side in Soccer Aid. So she's alongside Harry Redknapp, who better to learn from. But maybe can I suggest one person? What about Jack Ross? Well, she has been down to the training ground to learn alongside Jack. And we went along with her last week. Hi, I'm Judy Murray, and I am going to be joining Harry Redknapp and Robbie Keane on the management team for World Eleven at Soccer Aid this year. So I've come along to Hibs today to their training ground to watch Jack and the boys show me how to do it. Here you go. Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. That was really kind of you. I decided to come to Hibs because there's a huge family connection here. My dad played as a centre back in the early 50s. The boys were both Hibs kids and are still lifelong Hibs fans. So we are steeped in Hibs. So no better place to come and learn about coaching and how to train footballers. When you put up your, your white men, yeah. um, and I was thinking, I love that. And I was thinking, Jamie sometimes does that when he's practicing because he plays doubles and if he doesn't have his partner with him he puts somebody at the net and he only looks after his territory yeah, but yeah. but it, the visual is there that somebody is there and for who you're playing against it's the target isn't it and I'm thinking it is it's so much of it's transferable and we never share ideas enough across sports do we or come and observe other sports. My favourite memories of Hibs I think Back in the day when the boys were very small and a part of the Hibs Kids initiative, we used to go along and sit in the family section pretty much every Saturday that there was a home match. And I have some cracking pictures at home of the boys on the shoulders of Mickey Weir, Keith Wright, John Burridge. I had a very soft spot for Magic Michael O'Neill and Kevin McAllister. I loved Kevin McAllister. I think partly because he was from Falkirk, but also because he was so flipping fast. But my, of course, biggest success, memory, biggest excitement had to be the 2016 Scottish Cup final. It's Liam Henderson to deliver! David Gray has scored! The captain! And 2016 was the year that Jamie and Andy both ended up as year-end world number ones on the ATP Tour, one in singles and one in doubles, and Hibs won the Scottish Cup, and we were there. For me, I look at like so our players, like, uh, the, the players' feet that they have to move their feet in a pitch all the time. Mm -hmm. And when I watch tennis, I think footwork is. Yeah. You know, I'm a layman in that, but I watch. Like, I think the footwork, if the footwork's good, yeah. it gets them out of trouble, it moves them around yeah. the quickly, and yeah. you can develop, you can get better at that. Yeah, t totally. Yeah, I, I love all the small space stuff. I was contacted by Soccer Aid to ask if I would like to join the management team with Harry Redknapp and Robbie Keane for the World Eleven. So although I know relatively little about football and certainly have never played it 
competitively, I do know a lot about team building, motivation, what it takes to get to the top. For me, it's a massive opportunity to see behind the scenes of a massive fundraising event. It will raise around 10 million pounds for UNICEF to provide 2 billion vaccines for children in third world countries to get them out to play and back to school. The teams are a mix of stars of screen and sport, all sorts of sport, not just footballers. The thought of watching Usain Bolt passing to Martin Comston, passing to Patrice Evra, to Roberto Carlos, what's not to love? Ben, it looked great fun. Yeah, it really was. I mean, Judy's a massive high B. She was at the 2016 Scottish Cup final. We know about Andy and Jamie and their affiliation with the club. They were both part of our youth clubs and programmes and used to go to Easter Road regularly. And Judy's dad, of course, played for Hibernian too. However, there is one point of contention that I left out of the piece, and that is when we clicked on Andy Murray, he does not follow Hibernian on Twitter. So here at the High B Buzz, we need to make sure that he ticks follow because you're not a High B if you don't officially follow us on Twitter. But he's got the shirts and the scarf. He's been down to Easter Road. But Judy is a magnificent ambassador and also a fantastic coach. And what was really interesting, and we heard it in the piece just there, are the similarities, particularly around footwork and also operating in tighter spaces between tennis and football. And Judy and Jack had a really good chat about that. And Jack's really keen to learn from other sports. Like, I don't know whether, Yogi, when you've coached, you went any broader than football. Yeah, basketball. Basketball was the counter-attack, the, the quick press. Basketball plays a big part in football. But talking about Judy, I know Judy very well because I was a manager of folk at football club for a number of years, and we were based at Stirling University, where obviously Judy done all, all the tennis coaching, and a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic person. Cannot speak highly enough of Judy, and I just wish her all the best. She's in good company with Mr Harry Redknapp. <laughs> You'll be all right. Trust me. And Judy does so, so well for... I watch her programme on the, on the television for, for the women you know, and getting them out there in the forefront and all that, and fantastic. And she is the ambassador. She leads the way, you know, for that. And I could just wish her all the best. But as you say, Ben, any sport, any kind of sport that, uh, that you can use to help you, uh, then you tap into it. And as you say, tennis and the coaching knowledge that Judy's got, then I'm quite sure Jack will have learnt a lot. Yeah, I was just going to say, because the guy who's taken over at Jack's job at Sunderland, uh, Lee Johnson, I know reasonably well, but he he obviously, uh, as a young manager, trying to learn from other sports, but also going into places like A&E and learning how people deal under pressure. And that's all that sort of stuff is coming into management and coaching these days. Yeah, it's 100%. You, you're correct. It's, it's even the way you conduct yourself, the way you dress, how you interview, um, you know, what you say, the, the supporters, you know, the, the, you know, they go and support the team, but they're interested in how you see the game. Um, and it's all that and how you conduct yourself. I always find that quite funny, Angus, is, is a manager, if he's shown his emotion and he's out there and his team get beat, then, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. And yet, if he's cool, calm, collected, <laughs> not showing that kind of emotion, showing that kind of emotion where I know what I'm doing here, and his team or his team get beat, oh, he doesn't care. And it's that, it's that, you, you cannot win for getting it wrong. But it is, it plays a massive part in your, your appearance, the way you conduct yourself, are you articulate, um, and how you get your message over to the supporters and how you handle yourself under pressure. I see it, I look at it, and, you know, we're talking about uh, Livingston on Saturday. I think that David Martindale, the manager of Livingston, got asked a question, and you could see it ruffled them, and it, the question went back to last year. I think, I think that they hadn't won a game in 15 games last year. So it was Brian McLaughlin from the BBC that interviewed them and says, you've not won a game in 18 games. Quite naughty, but you could see it rattled uh, um, uh, the manager of Livingston. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to, that's what a manager, I think Jack Ross conducts himself very, very well. He does, he's very, tremendous, very well. tremendous with us and, and always really composed. And I think that's what you've got to be. And, and I, as a, you know, actually as a 
a trainer work with people and how they should deal with people like us you know how exactly those positions when you're put under pressure so you know it works both we put these people under pressure and then we tell them how to deal with it afterwards and you know ben i think is quite similar you know we we try and help people out, but not before we've asked all those questions anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rascal, Andy. You're a rascal. <laughs> right. Lovely to hear from uh, Judy anyway on our show. And now we have a new feature, and that is where Rudy comes in. Now, we understand that we may not be the biggest name in Scottish football. We're the best club, obviously, but not necessarily the biggest name. And some uh, celeb ex-footballers and uh, um, have not watched Hibs play. So here is our new feature. This is my first Hibs game. And what a way to start with a two-time World Footballer of the Year, a winner of the 1988 European Championship, twice a Champions League winner, Dutchman Rude Hullet. I'm uh, Rude Gillard, playing golf, as you see, and uh, I'm watching my first Hibs game. Ah, I saw the first goal. That was clever for the striker, to wait for the defender, and uh, so he earned the penalty. Very clever, almost Italian. Second goal. I think they studied this in the home, on, on the training ground, because that was an excellent uh, corner. Love it. Good goal. Good finish. Come on, Herbs. Come on. Well, terrific for Rude to get involved. Um, gr always great to have his input. He is uh, a tremendous, tremendous man, tremendous uh, advert for the game. And not a bad golfer, actually, John. He's now playing off about 4.5. Well, that would be too good for me. Too much for me. It's, it's me too. And he, um, yeah, he said so much time off during... Uh, COVID, that he's not been able to travel. He said, I've just spent it on the golf course. So he's taken about 10 shots off his handicap. Anyway, great to have Rude. We will have another special guest with their first Hibs game next week, uh, I am sure. Now, rounding things up, Adam, what's uh, going on on the socials? Yeah, well, I thought I would um, start with uh, Judy Murray. Um, <laughs> it's the content, really, that we all wanted to see. And thankfully, we were on hand <laughs> to capture it. Judy Murray bowing down to Sir David Gray. A sentence I never thought I would say, but it's absolutely magnificent. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you head over to our Twitter account. Um, we had Christian Doidge on last week as well. Um, looks like he's going to be having some uh, some stern words with us this week. Um, we uh, we put up some pictures of him celebrating Hibs goals. Now, he didn't seem to like his hair on the fourth one. <laughs> Who knew he was such a diva, eh? <laughs> I wondered what he was questioning and then I pulled that one up and went oh, I get it I get it yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely um, it's also uh happy national dog day now we've put a picture up of uh of Scott Allen and his dog um and there are tons and when I say tons there are literally tons of pictures of uh high bees with their uh with their dogs wearing hibernian colors it's magnificent um, so if you're a dog lover, I would definitely, definitely look out for that. I'd also show you my dog right now, but he's jumped on the floor asleep. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be much entertainment for anyone. Um, and then finally, uh, I was going to mention uh, Hibernian women. Now, if you haven't seen this, they're in absolutely magnificent form. They've scored 20 goals in their last two games, 20 goals. Absolutely magnificent. And one of those goal scorers was uh, Rachel Boyle, Martin's wife. There's a nice little link there. <laughs> Very good indeed. Wonder, well done, uh, Joelle and her, and her team. That's uh, terrific. Top of the table um, and really good performances. Ben, anything else to round up before we have to say goodbye? No, only really to emphasise how excited we all are at the club to welcome back a full capacity in all four stands. We've got kiosks open as well in each of them too. And there's some great new offerings. There's a new menu. There's a new design to them as well. You'll see it all branded as Hello Hungry High Bees, which I think has brilliant alliteration. And we were fortunate, me and Adam, to actually test the food. Such a difficult job, I know, about two and a half <laughs> weeks ago. And I had a hot dog and... There's donuts as well with green icing and there's also vegan offerings too. So do make sure that you taste it and feed back to us how delicious all of that is. But it's going to be a really emotional occasion. All the season ticket holders are back in their preordained seats and we should have 
our biggest numbers of the season so far. So I think it's one of the next steps where you really start to turn around and say, we're moving in the right direction out of this pandemic. Of course, there are still rules. I have to emphasize that. So please do refer to our recently updated spectator code of conduct. And again, just on the front of the vaccine as well, we are a very socially conscious club and we're always going to be community orientated. And it's therefore important to note as well that outside the stadium, we have a pop-up vaccination clinic as well. And you'll see at full time, any of the players that are eligible and haven't been vaccinated will be going down and getting their shot. But do come down. And if you would like to get vaccinated, it's a brilliant opportunity where you can just wait in line for a couple of minutes and get either your first or your second shot. So that's just us playing our part again as a football club to make sure that we welcome fans back. We have a big attendance and atmosphere, hopefully heading into the international break, top of the table. And then we can all get excited, of course, about the Edinburgh derby as well. But away from the football, it's your chance <laughs> to, to get vaccinated. I can see John rubbing his hands. If you beat Livingston, <laughs> think of the build-up. It's going to be really exciting heading to Tynecastle if we're top of the table. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. As I say, let's take care of business on Saturday against Livingston. And I'm quite sure the Edinburgh Derby match will take care of, take care of itself. Tremendous stuff, John. Great to have your company. Uh, welcome to the High Beat Buzz. No doubt, as we progress throughout the season, we will have you back on. Man, guys, it's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. And I just, to everyone, all Hibbies and all the team, and to Jack and all his team, keep up the good work. Yeah, it's been a brilliant start and long may it continue. Ben, thank you very much. Adam, great to have uh, your company as well. And your, and your little mutt, who unfortunately we didn't get to see. But <laughs> never mind. Maybe, maybe next time. Um, Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely to have your company. We will see you next week on the High B Buzz. From us all, cheerio. Cheerio.